I know, we've all been there, you know, you, you mug somebody and then you, you run away and you're looking through your loot and you're like, ah, oh, damn, I, I should have taken their hair because I, you know, maybe not selling it for an elixir, but, you know, make a rug out of it, make a hair shirt. Yeah, yeah today's video is all about uh, kind of grabbing the most you can out of your resources and letting nothing slip through your fingers. Um, we're not talking about mugging people and marks, but uh, water. In an SHTF situation, water is one of your critical resources. Uh, and the, le the less of it that you can use, uh, the, uh, the further your, your supplies of it are going to go. Um, whether you have like five gallon jugs in your house or just gallon jugs, or if you have a big cistern uh, down in your basement or something that, that has several hundred gallons of water, um, the more uses you can get out of your water, uh, the farther that resource is going to carry you. During normal times, here at the house, we pump water out of the well for most of our use. We also, also capture rainwater. That's what's cascading down through here right now with some rainwater. Uh, I capture it outside, I bring it in in a bucket, pour it into a little bucket up at the top there, there's a small hole in the bottom that drips down into a lower bucket where it gets filtered. You can see the plants growing out of there. There's a bunch of dirt and uh, sand. There's some charcoal in there. Filters down through there, then comes out this little white pipe at the bottom here. Goes into the fish tank uh, here with the goldfish. Uh, when this one overflows, it overflows into another goldfish tank, and when that one overflows, the uh, effluent goes out into our greenhouse gardens. So uh, we capture the, the rain resource, which is kind of a free resource. Um, we're using it to grow plants in this upper little filter here. We're using it to keep these fish alive, give them fresh water, keep those fish alive down there, and we're using uh, the water that comes out of that system to have an extra nutrient rich mix for uh, growing plants in our greenhouse. So we take a free resource and we use it multiple times uh, to go through there. If you're pumping well water, um, that obviously takes energy in an SHTF situation, depending on your setup, you may have the ability to continue pumping or you may not, or you may have a limited capacity for pumping. You may only have so much energy, whether you're you know, doing with solar power or, or who knows what. But the point is, the less water you use, the less water you have to acquire. And the less water you have to acquire, the better off you are. Um, for here at the house, just during normal times, what I do is um, when we take a shower, uh, we, instead of just being in the tub, uh, I, we're in a plastic sort of a storage tub. And I bought that originally as a bathtub for my boy uh, when he outgrew his regular bathtub. I bought this nice smooth bottom plastic uh, tub and with it being in the bathtub I realized that I could capture the shower water right in there and then pour it out into five gallon buckets and we use that for flushing the toilet. Uh, I haven't flushed the toilet with drinking water uh, which is kind of the classic American thing to do. I haven't flushed the toilet with drinking water in three years or so. Uh, what I used to do is uh, I had some five-gallon buckets and I uh, grabbed, a, I made a little bale bucket and I would put a bucket in the tub and I'd bale the water out. So we'd put a stopper in the tub while we took a shower, then bale it into the buckets. But I found that uh, having the storage tub uh, made it a lot easier because it captured almost all the water and then I just picked the whole thing up and pour it. It was just a lot quicker, a lot less messy. Um, and so that's the way we do it now. 
Um, and like I said, we use that water for flushing the toilet. So we get a shower out of the water. We get uh, toilets flushed with that. So we get waste disposal out of the water. So right there, I've doubled the usefulness of the water, so, which means I am able to pump half as much water for those two uh, purposes. Any extra water we uh, just take, we put down into the gray water system and waters the greenhouse. Um, an additional use that you can use, and it's not something that I do during, you know, kind of normal pre-SHF times, but during uh, um, a disaster, you could also wash your laundry with that water. Uh, and I've, I've done that occasionally when I've been at a hotel. You know, you, you're in the shower, you put your laundry at the bottom. I, I wouldn't put really nice lacy things in there. I, I usually keep my lace underwear, you know, in, in a nice bag for when I'm washing that. You can put your laundry in the bottom of the tub and you kind of step on it uh, while you're taking a shower. and that will, it's not going to give it the best washing of its life, um, but it'll get it adequately clean. So there you're getting three uses out, so you've cut your water use down by a third. So instead of having to say pump 100 gallons per week, we can get by on 33 gallons per week. So that's a substantial savings. Um, additionally, if you are capturing your water that you use for showers, um, storing it in, in pails or whatever in the bath, uh, bathroom to use for flushing later on, um, that's hot water. Or if you're like me, it's really hot water. Um, and if you know anything about heating water, you know it takes a substantial amount of energy invest, invested into that water to get it that hot. Uh, and that costs you a lot to create that hot water. So why just throw that, res that heat resource away? So forget the water for a moment. Just the heat uh, is something that's really worth holding on to, especially if it's cold and, and you want to help to keep your, your house warm. While the, the water is sitting in those buckets, it's going to be radiating that heat out into your house instead of radiating it out into your septic system or the sewer somewhere. So that's an additional benefit that you're getting uh, on top of that. There's an additional benefit right here of this whole system is I get a delightful little waterfall, which while I'm sure it's mildly grating to your ears right now, being recorded in the real world here, it's actually quite delightful. Um, and it's, is it sending out negative ions for my new age? Fifth eye, third eye, fifth, fifth level of consciousness, third eye, something. I'm being radiated with positive vibes right now, too. Uh, and another thing that you can do, and you've heard it a million times before, is uh, you know, not flushing your toilet incessantly. Uh, uh, you know, most Americans flush their toilets with drinking water every time there's just a little bit of pee in there or whatever. Um, and if uh, you don't do that, uh, you can absolutely keep up just with the, uh, the shower water you have. If you're flushing your toilet after every time you drop like one drop of pee in it, you know, I don't think you're probably going to take enough shower time to, to compensate for that. And you wouldn't want to because you respectively would be flushing your toilets with hot water if you're like taking an hour long shower because you're like, oh, I need all this extra water to, <laughs> to, water, to flush my toilet. So you kind of have to do the, if it's mellow, yellow, the yellow, you know that thing, you have to do that. Uh, when it poop, you want to flush that as soon as you can. One other thing I would note about flushing poop down the toilet is um, the toilet absolutely never clogs when you're flushing it with a giant thing of, of water because it's like a, a jet shooting it down. So you, I never have to deal with clog problems or anything like that. Not that it was ever a huge deal in the past, but it's uh, flushing with a bucket is much more powerful than flushing with the... Um, the regular uh, toilet flusher. Although I do find you use more water than the toilet would. Um, granted, it's recycled water, so it's kind of like, you know, it's free water anyway. But uh, while my toilet uh, flushes with 1.6 gallons of water, I've never, I've never only used 1.6 gallons dumped from the bucket just because I'm messier and it's a little less efficient uh, in that regard. But again, since it's a free resource, um, you're getting it for nothing. So it's kind of like flushing with zero gallons anyway. And the last thing that I would mention is other uses of water, like washing your dishes. Uh, oh, it just runs up my spine when I go to someone's house, like I go to my parents' house, and uh, they go to wash dishes and they like blast the hot water on. It's like coming out like a fire hose. And they're standing there and they're like kind of using it and then they like stop and they're like talking about something. And it's like Niagara Falls going down their, their, uh, their drain uh, as they're working. You're very capable of washing dishes if you do it by hand, um, which is probably what you'd be doing in an SHDF situation if you don't have electricity for a dishwasher and all that. Um, you're very capable of doing that with just a, a small flow of water. It takes longer, um, and, but you can get the water to, to go over everything. You can wash dishes with very little water also. Uh, and if you are capturing that water, you can use that for other uses. We use all of our dishwashing water for 
uh, irrigating the greenhouse as well. So the key idea here is to maximize your resource by using it as many times as possible and as efficiently as possible. And that's good practice during normal times, um, but it's absolutely critical during an SHTF situation because resources are going to be limited. And the more you can get out of them, uh, the better off you're going to be. Thanks for watching.